Um, and we're going to go check in with our morning anchor, Lisa Greenberg, live in just a minute here. She is learning some really interesting ways that we can take care of our veins. Hey, Lisa, how's it going? Hi guys, yeah, we are taking your healthy family live here in Cape Coral. We are at Lumiere Cosmetic Vein Center right now to talk about ice baths. And when you think of an ice bath, like what you see right here, all these bags of ice, you probably think of muscle recovery. These are something that athletes do after a rigorous workout, those athletes that work out every single day. But here's the thing, people like you and me at home, we can benefit from these ice baths as well, just by getting in, submerging, it's good for your vein health. It's good for your circulation. So right now I have Dr. Sneha Cipriano with me this morning to kind of talk about how we can set up one of these at our own homes. If you have a bathtub, this is that's really all you need. Of course, I have this big tub here, so it's a little bit bigger than the typical bathtub. So when we're talking about how to set this up inside your own home, keep that in mind. But Dr. Cipriano, let's talk about what we need here. Obviously, we've got the bags of ice. This tub is filled with water right now. There is a lot of water in here. And what kind of temperature are we talking about? We're looking for between 50 to 60 degrees. Um, obviously, if it's your first ice bath, go closer to 60 right. and work your way down. When you're talking about an ice bath this big, of course, I have six bags of ice here. So that's a lot of ice that we're going to be pouring into this tub. But when you're doing this at home, it's also kind of the same thing. If you're a beginner, you might not need quite as much ice. You want to ease into this and kind of gain that experience, right? Yeah, so the, the ratio is about three to one for water to ice and it takes a few minutes for the temperature to adjust. I suggest you have a thermometer so that you know how cold your water is. And our friend here, Stacy Renee, is going to be getting into this bath here in just a little bit. How far in does she need to go to really feel the full benefit? So full benefit is as far as you can tolerate. When you're starting out, they said you could just put in your lower half of the body and then kind of work your way up to your neck. Right, right. So obviously you want to keep in mind too that this is something you're going to want to do with someone at home with you. This isn't Correct. something you're going to want to be sitting at home alone and thinking I'm going to try an ice bath for the very first time today, right? right? And then you also want to check to make sure that it's okay for you to do an ice bath right. if you have certain medical conditions like heart disease or high blood pressure or open wounds. These are things that you do not want to do an ice bath with. So if you're not sure, better to ask somebody, ask your healthcare provider to say, okay, is this something that I can do or I should steer clear from? Good advice there. So we are talking a lot about reaping the benefits of an ice bath just like this or one that you're setting up at home. Listen to this. Here's all the benefits that you can get from it. Arteries can contract, they can constrict, they've got muscle within them. Veins can as well, but not to the same level and extent. But Dr. Joseph Cipriano, who created Lumiere Cosmetic Vein Center, says something that can help with constricting those veins to bring blood from the rest of your body back to your heart, ice baths. Cold, ice. Nobody likes to embrace or think of that here in Florida. I know when it gets below 70, I still feel like I gotta wear a jacket, so it gets cold out. But that little bit of exposure to that cooler environment helps encourage that blood flow in return. It's gonna clamp down on all the skin's tissues and actually make it so you get that e evacuation of venous blood. And why is that important? The movement of venous blood out of the tissues, out of the muscles, it's carrying that waste, the CO2, the acids, the metabolic byproducts, all the stuff that your body is trying to get rid of, but it's having a hard time moving it. So when we help it. When we enable that, we help with the removal of that waste. We help protect ourselves, prevent injury, and help with recovery after our exercises. All right, so we are getting this ice bath ready to go. We are dumping in all of this ice here. We just ran and got it from the store. You know, you don't want it sitting too long waiting to get into that ice bath. And in just a little bit, we're going to have our friend Stacy Renee jump in on in here. We are going to be asking her live. How is she feeling as she is submerging into this ice? It is cold. I will tell you that it is cold, but she is ready. She says she's excited to do this. And we're also going to be talking about what kind of feelings you feel after you get out of the ice bath. Because of course, while you're in here, you're thinking, why am I even doing this? But I promise you, you will feel some benefits afterwards. Chris, Amy. All right, I have a quick question, Lisa. If we are going to try this at home, do they have a recommended amount of time that you should stay in? Right, so if you're a beginner, you're going to want to stick to around two minutes here inside of the ice bath. As
as you get more advanced in doing this, as you get more comfortable doing this and you've done it more and more times, you can go and then add that time. The last time I did an ice bath, it was my third time. So I decided to bump up to three minutes. And I'm telling you that first minute is always really difficult. But once you move along in that time and you spend more time in the ice bath, your body gets used to it. You get acclimated and it starts to feel actually pretty good. Is there a recommended? I mean, this is going to sound like a silly question, but I don't want to <laughs> get too cold. How much ice do you need to put in there for like a, maybe a regular bathtub? We talking like two or three bags? Yeah, probably. She said three to one ratio, right? Right. So basically, you're going to want to think Obviously this tub is huge. So that's why I put in six bags of ice just to really get that water to the right temperature, that 50 to 60 degrees. If you have a smaller tub and especially again, if you're a beginner, so if you're just starting this out, if this is your first time, maybe starting with a smaller amount of bags, even, even if you're just like, Hey, I want to see what this feels like. I'm going to dump in one or two bags just to kind of get that feeling and get over the fear of getting into that cold water initially, then adding more as you go. So if you're a beginner, I would, I, and based on my conversations mm -hmm. here with Dr. Cipriano as well, we were talking probably no more than what, two or three bags to yeah, start out? Just to start out and get the idea, see what you can tolerate. Yes, exactly. So that's the key is it's kind of cool too because you can customize this to how you want to do it. So if you're thinking, gosh, 50 to 60 degrees sounds terrible. So I'm going to start out just let's get the water to 75 degrees, see how that feels. It's something that this is for your benefit. So do it how you want to do it. I feel cold all of a sudden. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Chilly. I, it's definitely piqued my interest, though, because if yeah. it can help your heart health and your veins. All right, we're going to check back with Lisa in a little bit. Thanks so much for that, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa.